Hey everyone, what's up and welcome to our first ranged tier list for the beginning of the Sinful Arena Season 1 of Shadowlands. Our previous tier list, which you can see on the screen now, was put together purely from the final stages of the Shadowlands beta. Since then, there have been a multitude of changes to both class and covenant balance, as well as current gear and renown levels being slightly different. But now that the season is well and truly underway and a meta has begun to be established, we figured it's time to hit up our rank 1 consultants to help bring you the best PvP casters of the early Shadowlands Season 1. For this tier list, we're going to be using our standard list system, placing the ranged into four different places, ranging from unranked up to our highest tier of S. But before we do get into things, we wanted to let you know that we recently relaunched our World of Warcraft site over at skillcap.com. It's got a brand new look, and our core system is filled with introductory class guides for every class from some of the best players around, including Chanimal, Maro, Zipai, and Zuniaki, just to name a few. We've also packed in courses with arena commentaries and user reviews that you can watch to learn how the pros make their decisions in real time and help you all learn from your mistakes together. So, if you're interested in taking your PvP game to the next level and starting your journey to Gladiator, head on over to skillcap.com slash wow and sign up today. Link in the description below. And if you're interested in joining our community Discord, which is filled with useful resources and quick access guides, we've also got that linked below. Without any further ado, let's jump into it. Kicking things off, we've got our unranked tier. The reasoning for having this tier is that the specs inside just haven't seen enough ladder play for us to see a true representation of how strong or weak they truly are. That being said, why these specs are underrepresented is more than likely down to their current strength, be it the case that the class has much stronger alternative specs for Arena, or the spec itself simply has some fundamental issues that cause it to not see play. The first spec dropping into our unranked tier list is Demonology Warlock. Demonology has sadly gotten the short end of the straw going into Shadowlands, receiving almost no impactful changes. As a result, they are still suffering the same issues that they had in BFA namely the fact that all their damage is built into Demonic Tyrant, with the spec predominantly taking a more ramp-based approach, where you spend multiple globals to build up your damage before you can attempt to burst. For anyone that's played Arena recently and has seen just how fast-paced it is, you'll understand why this ramp-up playstyle just doesn't fit into the meta right now. That being said though, if the game does slow down a little, which is likely to happen once we get more defensive conduits and renown levels, we could see Demonology climbing up the ranks a bit. Joining Demonology in our unranked tier list, we've got Destro Warlocks. After their pure domination of BFA, everybody's favorite caster to come up against in Arena has been at the receiving end of a plethora of nerfs, including huge nerfs to the PvP talent Focused Chaos, plus the removal of Entrenched in Flame and Grimoire of Supremacy, three changes that have gone on to heavily hurt destruction inside of Shadowlands. This further isn't helped by just how fast and bursty the meta currently is. You can no longer stand still and soak up a lot of the pressure that melee classes are capable of putting out, so you're forced to utilize Gateway and Demonic Circle to consistently kite. So, it comes as no surprise a caster like Destro Warlock, with long casts like Chaos Bolt and much weaker instant damage compared to their Affliction counterpart, is currently not seeing too much play. That being said, although rarely seen in Raided Arena, Destro is by no means bad, being able to adapt a more instant-based build with abilities like Shadowburn and Conflag. So, if we do end up seeing any buffs to Destro or nerfs to Affliction, we could very easily see the scales tip and make Destro Warlocks a much more popular choice in Raided Arena. And the final addition to our unranked tier is another spec that we just haven't seen enough of to truly give them a proper ranking yet, and that's BM Hunter. BM, much like Demonology, hasn't received too many changes coming into Shadowlands, and its core playstyle has remained, for the most part, the exact same. As a result, a lot of the rated arena player base has instantly gravitated towards the much stronger alternative Hunter specs. Nevertheless, BM in and of itself does decent damage, but nothing near the burst of a Marksman Hunter or the sustained damage of Survival. The core issue with BM, and one of the main reasons alongside the strength of the other two Hunter specs, is that you're so heavily reliant on your pet for any form of damage, and with pets being even easier to kill now, combined with an increased cast time on Revive Pet, you can see why BM just isn't seeing much rated play. Alright, now let's jump onto our next tier, the B tier, where we have Frost Mage. Frost Mage looked good during the beta, but with numerous nerfs to their instant damage and a much faster paced meta coming into play, 
Frost's more control and slow based approach has caused them to fall short. But it still does bring a ton of CC with Polymorph, the added addition of slows and roots, and even still provides a lot of instant damage. But like most ranged on this list, it's just not comparable to some of the stronger ranged on our tier list and firmly roots itself inside of our B tier. That being said, if there is one spec that I would put money on climbing up this list as the expansion goes on, it's for sure going to be Frost Mage as it still even now has some standout caster compositions. Joining Frost Mage in our B tier, we've also got Arcane. Arcane's niche has always been its ability to survive and extend games. As it stands right now though, this just isn't the case being in such a fast paced meta. Not to mention, Arcane lacks the real impactful burst damage that a lot of our ranged classes are capable of, and still has the issue of having both its damage and CC tied to the same school of magic, unlike both Fire and Frost. Although it's worth mentioning, Arcane is slightly more durable than other mage specs, thanks to still having Temporal Shield and the utility of Mass Invisibility. For now though, if we don't see any more tuning, both Frost and Arcane are going to be a lot weaker alternatives to the much stronger Fire. Okay then, now it's time to move up to our A tier and take a look at those ranged specs that have fallen just short of our highest tier. First up, we've got the Kings of Beta, MM Hunters who are disengaging down from their previous S tier spot in our last tier list. The reason for MM Hunters not being so dominant anymore is down to a few factors. First of all, is that they are best paired up with a sub rogue, and with sub rogue now being at the receiving end of some much welcome nerfs, marksmanship has lost some of its strength. Remember, you're only good as your best composition when it comes to arena. It's also safe to say a lot of MM strengths was also down to players not really knowing how to play versus it, and as a result, not properly respecting their incredibly high burst. Don't let their drop in rank discourage you though, as MM damage has remained for the most part the same having only received a 5% nerf to both aimed and arcane shots, and still is honestly ridiculous when it comes to burst damage and still has all of their instant CC to make it really count. It's also worth mentioning that, although MM does very well into certain casters, they do tend to struggle when it comes to melee cleaves, which are very common right now. Joining Marksman inside of our A tier, we've got Affliction Warlock. Affliction Warlock has been very up in the air in terms of perceived strength, with a lot of Warlock mains struggling to adapt. Well, honestly, we believe Affliction to be very strong in the right circumstances, and definitely comes with a rather large skill cap attached to it. When combining their Night Phase signature ability, Soul Shape, with the mobility of Demonic Circle and Gateway, they can be one of the hardest casters to maintain uptime on, if they play well. There are no qualms about Affliction's damage in any regard, having both really strong burst during their Dark Soul and Dark Glare with Malefic Rupture, and also great sustained damage from their instant dots. It's mainly all been about their survivability, but trust us, put an Affliction with a Holy Paladin and another caster in 3v3, and you're going to find that Affliction is incredibly strong. Oh, and I bet you thought I forgot to mention it, didn't you? Yes, their legendary Sacrilash's Dark Strike is one of the most annoying things to play against and is one of the main reasons they're so high on this list. All right, so we've reached the moment you've more than likely been waiting for. What are the best casters for our early look at Arena Season 1? First of all, we've got Elemental Shamans. Simply put, Elementals have it all. They bring high disruption for casters with Grounding Totem and Wind Shear, and are impossible for melee to connect to with Ghost Wolf and Frost Shock, and their only real weakness right now is that they are susceptible to dying inside of stuns. But between Primal Earth Elemental and Astral Shift combined with Nature's Guardian and the Necrolord Soulbind ability oozes frictionless coating, you can survive for a decent amount of time. And if not stunned, Elemental Shaman has some of the highest healing as a hybrid in the game. Why Elemental is in our highest tier though, is not their disruption or even their ability to deal with melee, or even their off healing. It mainly has to do with their burst damage. Ellie's have one of the most overpowered Covenant abilities right now, which is actually being heavily slept on, Primordial Wave. This combined with the talent Echoing Shock can result in some near ridiculous levels of damage with Lava Burst if the stars align. And if that wasn't enough, you've got Stormkeeper, which again has the potential to 100 to 0 enemies without any real setup. Oh, and we're not done yet. Elementals also have Lightning Lasso, which if set up properly can easily do over half your entire health pool in a single channel. Not only an extremely strong caster right now, but one of the most fun to play. But if you thought Elemental Burst was high, our next caster cranks up the heat to maximum levels. 
Yes, I'm obviously talking about Fire Mage. Thanks to the potency conduit, Infernal Cascade, and the reworked Rune of Power, your burst during combustion is at critical mass. There is nothing that comes even remotely close. If a Fire Mage pops combustion, you have almost no time to react, and unless you've got a very strong defensive, you'll probably still die even if you're able to. This makes Fire Mage fantastic in any setup composition. Pair them up with a melee who can lock a target down with a stun during combustion, and then peel you while you're getting it back with Pyrokinesis. Or even a strong hybrid, such as Elemental or Shadow Priest, and you have some of the best comps in the game right now. Fire Mage's only real weakness generally has been its survivability when compared to either Frost or Arcane, but thanks to the Triune Ward Legendary, this has been heavily improved upon. Granted, it's safe to say Fire Mage isn't overly scary if they don't have Combustion ready, but the sheer damage that you can do while it's up and the ability to get it back before players get their defensives ready paired up with the standard Mage CC more than make up for it. Next up, they were S tier all throughout the beta, and the start of this season brings no change. Shadow Priest came into the expansion having a very big overhaul, which greatly favored them when it came to rated PvP, shifting their damage away from more of a ramp up dot style to giving them more instant damage with Devouring Plague and multiple ways to get up their damage over time effects thanks to Unfurling Darkness and the addition of Damnation. Honestly, Shadow Priest, at least in our opinion, is one of the most well-rounded casters. They're not overpowered in any one aspect or possess any crazy gimmicks. They instead bring solid instant CC with the ability to combine Psychic Horror, Silence, Psychic Scream, or even Thought Steal, with the decent burst coming from Void Eruption, Void Bolt, and even Power Infusion, while still maintaining high overall pressure from their damage over time effects. Moreover, another great asset is their utility and defensive tools, having highlights like Void Shift, Dispersion, and Greater Fade at their disposal. Hands down though, the biggest addition to the S Priest kit has to be the Venthyr Covenant ability Mind Games. This spell is incredibly unique and causes a healer's heals to deal damage and a damage dealer's damaging abilities to heal their target instead on top of a huge initial hit. Simply put though, Shadow Priest is a very well-rounded caster that can fit into almost any composition and have great success. Alright, rounding out our S tier and this tier list as a whole, we have another hybrid spec, the Balanced Druid. Balanced Druids offer two things which are incredibly strong in this meta, high instant burst damage and strong CC. During Incarn or Celestial Alignment, you can look to combine up to three instant star surges in three globals, all capable of dealing upwards of 10k damage each. Combine this with the instant CC of a Bash or Root Beam onto a healer, and you've got yourself a deadly combination, especially if further combined with the instant burst of an elemental or high damage melee at your side. Balance also gains one of two very strong Covenant choices, the more stable option of the Curing Covenant Kindred Spirits or the more RNG-based Convoke the Spirits. Furthermore, Balanced Druids still bring the great control throughout a game with the constant pressure of Cyclone, which can now also be combined with the High Winds PvP talent to further peel for yourself or your teammates. And hybrid off heals are still looking super strong right now, so you can even look to throw out regrowths to help support your team. Overall, an incredibly strong toolkit that allows Balanced Druids to work in a number of different meta-dominant compositions, at least until we see their damage numbers tuned. Alright then everyone, that's going to be it for our best PvP ranged in Shadowlands Patch 9.0 tier list. We'll be releasing a melee edition later in the week. But for now, we hope everybody is enjoying the PvP season so far, and be sure to give this video a like and hit that subscribe button to be notified the moment we release any new content. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.